Welcome back, beer lovers. This week we are in Bruges, Belgium. This Venice of the North is a charming town with cobblestone streets, canals, and stunning medieval architecture. Tourists also come for the art, the gourmet chocolates, and of course, the torture. They also have an amazing beer museum that is filled with some great beer-related knowledge and history. Of course, we're here for the beer. So if you're ready, pour yourself a pint, strap in, and let's have some beer. What's going on, beer lovers? We have a brand new episode for you. And again, we are in Belgium. Today we're in Bruges and we're visiting Half Moon Brewery or Brewery de Half Moon. Um, we're about to go in, try their beers. I've actually tried a couple while we've been in town. Uh, super excited to get in and check it out. So without further ado, let's, let's have, have some beer. beer. So this is Half Moon Brewery. The outside patio may have been empty, but I bet in the summer months, this place is absolutely packed. David and I were already craving a beer, but of course, as soon as we walked in, there was a tour starting and we decided to join them as we know nothing about this place. Meet Nigel, our tour guide. No, that's not his real name, but he looks like a Nigel. Charming fellow indeed. He showed us the actual brew house and where they do all their research and development. And I was just in love with these tanks. I began to notice a trend in Belgium. Really big equipment, narrow hallways and stairs. How on earth did they get this stuff in here? Seriously. Nigel later on went over the history of brewing and especially Half Moon. It all started in 1856 by a gentleman named Henry Mays who opened the brewery in his own name. It was one of many breweries in the area, however, this is the last one standing. This is partially due to their dedication to quality, but also their creativity. They went from transporting beer by horse-drawn trucks to building a two-mile-long pipeline underground to reach their bottling plant. And did I mention that that was crowdfunded? Oh yeah, and those are definitely outdoor fermenters. The business is now carried on for over six generations, and although a lot has changed in that time, the vision still remains. Make good beer. Now let's drink. All right, so the first beer up is something very, very special. This beer is actually only brewed one place in the world, and that's right here. This is the only place you can drink the beer, and the reason why is because it's unfiltered and unpasteurized, meaning that it loses its flavor quite quickly. But the plus of that is that this 6% blonde is freshly brewed. That means it probably came out of fermentation probably less than a week ago. Um, and you can tell, actually the screen's kind of picking up that cloudy, hazy look. Um, it kind of looks like wort, to be honest with you. This is normally what my beer looks like right before fermentation starts, but I'm thirsty, I'm gonna drink it. So, I'll tell you guys what I think. great. Uh, the yeast quality out of this is just incredible. I, you guys know I talk extremely highly of Belgian yeast strains and just how they influence the flavor of the beer. It's like this rich clovey flavor. This beer in particular is also quite sweet. Um, do you get sweetness out of this too? You definitely get a lot of the malt characteristics but it does taste like it's almost like not completely fermented out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it doesn't taste like it's completely fermented out, but 
what it does is it just creates a delicious, it's like a treat. This is like, yeah, it, it's got a nice smooth mouthfeel. Um, it's really creamy. It honestly tastes like a dessert beer almost. Um, it's not that sweet. Maybe not a dessert beer, but like a pre-dessert beer. All right, so the beer that I'm drinking is called Brugs Zot Double. It is a 7.5% here at uh, Half Moon Brewery, so let's give it a shot. It's really good. It's, uh, it's got a really nice malt and just a really subtle smokiness to it. Uh, but it's it's also very creamy. Um, this is a really easy beer to drink at seven and a half percent I would say it's also somewhat of a dangerous beer to drink, but it do, does have a really nice um, Rich ending to it. So it kind of lingers after you've tasted it. Uh, I really like this one It definitely tastes like the more I drink it the more it's going to uh, Bring out extra flavor inside. So I like I think this is a really full well-balanced beer itself. All right, so the next beer I'm reviewing is called Strafe Hendrick Wild. This is their 2019 edition. Um, it's 9%, it's a tripel, uh, but it's fermented with wild yeast. Um, obviously things have changed since the old days of wild fermentation, uh, but still I love the idea of them actually just culturing natural yeast out of the environment. So I'm really excited to try it. Cheers. Wow. It's really weird because you get like like the Belgian-y esters uh, in, out of the yeast on the nose. The actual flavor, it's really interesting. It, it does have a slight funk to it, but it's not very acidic at all. It doesn't taste like a sour or anything. Um, it's just fruity. It's actually really fruity. Um, one thing I gotta point out, by the way, though, check it out. I gotta say, in Europe, they have a different glass for every beer, and it's the coolest thing ever. I wish uh, more breweries did this back home. It's just something about it makes it feel like an extra special beer. It's definitely an experience. Um, back to the beer, though. It has a little funk on it, um, but it's very mild. Subtle, you kind of have to look for it. The actual body itself, it's got fantastic malt body to it. I would say that that's probably more pronounced than the actual yeast qualities. However, you're still getting that like natural Belgian-y flavor out of this. It's quite enjoyable, actually. Um, pretty happy with it. All right, so this is the last one we're uh, reviewing today. Uh, we did have a Zoplon last night that was absolutely delicious, um, but this one right here is the Straf Hendrick Quadruple. Um, so yeah, let's see how it is. So this is an 11% uh, beer, but it is super creamy. It's really rich. I would say it tastes more like uh, a seven percent beer, so it can be a little bit dangerous. Uh, despite how heavy it looks, it smells amazing. The flavor is just, it's quick to the punch, but it doesn't sit there and overwhelm it, so it's not super rich. It's actually a really easy beer to drink. Ten out of ten, we'll get again. All right, guys, so I'm about to review my last beer. I know what you're thinking. What? How many beers are you guys reviewing? This is not normal. Well, Europe isn't very normal, let me tell you. Uh, we're not drinking tasters here. We're drinking full glasses, and it's the middle of the day, so David and I are not trying to get wasted midday. So, yeah, I'm about to drink the Straf Hendrick uh, Triple. Um, this is 9%, sounds delicious, looks just absolutely stunning. I love this color. It's just golden. It's oh, it's beautiful. All right. Anyways, cheers. Got a little in my nose. Oh. Mm. 
This is the one for me. This is mm, magnificent. It's a beautiful blend of just like those rich Belgian flavors. Um, the hops are there, but they're not like predominant. This isn't an IPA or anything, but it's great because you really get like the hop flavor out of it. Uh, the finish is just clean. It's 9% and the thing drinks like a beauty. I just, I feel like royalty drinking this beer. It's, it's just fantastic. Unbelievably complex, yet absolutely delicious. Everything blends together perfectly. This was a good way for me to finish, for sure. All right, guys, that's gonna do it here at Half Moon Brewery. We had an excellent time. In all honesty, I've been on a lot of brew tours. Obviously, at this point, I know what the brew process is like, but this brew uh, tour was probably one of the best I've ever been on. Um, very informative, unique history. Our tour guide was hilarious. <laughs> And uh, all in all, I mean, it was really cool just learning how this brewery like survives some of the struggles uh, in the in the Bruges beer history. So it, it was really really cool. And then obviously the beers were incredible. Uh, we really enjoyed them. I hope you liked our video. Um, yeah. If you did like it, don't forget you're going to like it. You're gonna share it. You're gonna subscribe. You're gonna click that nice little bell icon because you want to see plenty more to come. So that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeff. I'm David. And we'll see you again on Let's, Let's Have, Have Some, Some Beer. Beer. Cheers. <laughs> Today, David and I are actually in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And we're here to visit Bruges Eich.